Good evening, my friends. How are you? Welcome to our PMP Exam Excellent Coaching for Cost Management. I hope you guys are doing all right. Remember, it's a one-hour session, so if you've got any questions, you want to type them in, like, as soon as you can, like, now. Just type the questions in, and I'll get to you as soon as I can with answers. So we are on to cost management. Earlier on today, we took a look at schedule management. And I've got a question to start the show here. We talked about this earlier on. And I'll read the question while I launch the poll. You have been brought in to spearhead a project that has high visibility and a very high profile funding source. You are holding an estimating meeting. The outcome produces an estimate that is minus 25% to plus 75% accurate. Which estimate is it most likely to be? Some of you would have seen this before. Let's do it. All right, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Let's hit the end button. Let's share the poll or the results. And it seems like most people went for rum, rough order of magnitude. Well, let's take a look at the PMBOK guide and see what the answer is from here. So if you open up the book to 241, what does it state? It states, cost estimates should be reviewed and refined during the course of the project. And then it goes further to say, for example, a project in initiation phase may have a rough order of magnitude estimate in the range of minus 25% to plus 75%. And that's why it's called rough order of magnitude, also known as ROM. Some people call this a top down, or they refer to this as an analogous estimate. So it's rough, but it's minus 75 to plus 75%. So the answer is indeed ROM. Okay, let's take a look and see if we've got any other questions for this segment. I do not believe we have, but let me see. No, we don't. So let's go straight into cost management. Cost management is broken into four processes and it looks short, but don't be deceived because earned value is a beast. Earned value just gulps up a lot of time. And that's why I'm being rather quick because I know before you know it, it's gonna be the end of the session. So plan cost management, two big things to note here, what you get out from plan cost management is a cost management plan. And as usual, this plan guides you on how to run the processes in that knowledge area. Now the tools and techniques that you use to do this, they have a common theme across schedule, scope, cost, quality, risk, procurement, and stakeholder, they have a common theme. All of the subsidiary planning processes to plan all of the plans from these areas, they all use data analysis and meetings. So you'll see reference being made to data analysis quite a lot. So the tools and techniques for this first one, you're gonna find data analysis. Really it's an alternatives analysis. You're trying to find alternatives for carrying out the processes in this knowledge area, alternatives for managing the cost, and you're also gonna find meetings. Meetings is also a tool and technique of plan cost management. 
But that common theme, knowing the common theme is going to help you. Just remember, oh, data analysis, meetings, tools and techniques across all of those areas. All right, the very next process is estimate cost. And in estimate cost, we estimate how much each activity or clusters of activities will cost. So we're talking about work packages here sometimes. Some people go straight for the work package and other people might just go for the task bit by bit. So your major output from here is gonna be your cost estimates and your basis of estimates, your BOEs. Those are the big ticket items from here. And your cost estimates are refined across several stages. It's not just a one-time thing. There's some interchange between schedule, the schedule knowledge area, cost knowledge area, resource knowledge area. There's a lot of give and take. So it's not a one-time deal and that's the end. No, there could be a lot of interactions here. Determine budget is the next one and the big ticket items from here are what? Give them to me, one and two. What are the two big ones that come to your mind? Cost baseline, thank you very much LTC, awesome. Cost baseline, what's the other one? Is there some other one? Basis of estimates. Let's, let's go there and see. 7.2. What are the big ticket items you see? Cost estimates. No, no, no. 7.3. I'm sorry. 7.3. Cost baseline. But there is no BOEs. BOEs are only for estimates. So what is it? PFR, exactly. Thank you, Maribel. That's it. Thank you, Angel. Very good. Doris, thank you. Project funding requirements. So when we talk about project funding requirements, people often think about a total amount, but this is not just a total amount. It's very important that when you do this, you think about the project periodically. So when you talk about the funding requirements, how much money do you need across the various time periods for the project. So it's not enough to tell management, I need 80 million. You need to give them the breakdown of the 80 million. Is it gonna be 15 across the board or are we gonna have a 15 and then a 30 and then uh, 25 maybe, and then it tapers off into smaller pieces like that? In terms of million, 45, 70, and 80. These are all millions. And this is month one, two, three, four, five, for example. So you need to break it down, not just give them the whole number at the top, but periodically. So it will tell you that the project funding requirements are the funding requirements for the project in total, but also periodically. And this forms the basis for a tool and technique that is called, what is it called? Funding limit reconciliation. Funding limit reconciliation will take a look at these breakdowns of budget and say, oh, do we have a funding limit? And it could be, maybe management cannot do 30 million or 25 million. So they tell you a funding limit is 20 million for every month, you cannot go above 20 million. So what are you gonna do in that case? You gotta move 5 million from here, 5 million from here somewhere else, just move the money around. So you hear that term funding limit reconciliation, that's really what it means. All right, so going back to where we were, we were at the third one and you guys got the project funding requirements and the cost baseline. Final process is where earned value lives. And this is control cost. And in control cost, we have all of those EACs and all that fun stuff. And just to remind you of the most ferocious of all, that formula you see behind me, 
that's where we're going to be talking about all of this stuff, EACs, the BAC, AC, so on and so forth. So without much ado, I am going to ask you to type in the basic formula for earned value. What is the formula for earned value? Can you type that in for me? How do you calculate earned value? There are two ways you can do it. And I'm curious to know if you know what those ways are. So why don't you chat in to me? Earned value formula. I'll give you 30 seconds. The question is, what is the formula for earned value, EV? How do you calculate EV? Thank you very much for the chats. Um, actual percent complete, yes. And you can refer to it as percent complete, that's right. So why don't you follow me to the PMBOK guide, that page you guys love, page 267. Take a look at that earn value formula, the second one on that line, what does it say? It says, the measure of work performed expressed in terms of the budget authorized for that work. And then it says EV equals sum of planned value of completed work. So it's a little bit of a lame formula for earned value in the PMBOK guide. And that's why I'm going to give you a more robust understanding of it to really keep it in your back pocket because you just never know when these sneaky question writers bring a question where you have to calculate EV. If you don't know EV, you're in trouble. So let's take a look at a very simple example. There is a wall to be painted. Some of you have seen this on the LMS. There's a wall to be painted and the work has been broken down into four days. Each day is valued, the budget, the budgeted cost of work scheduled, or if you will, the planned value has been given as $10 for each day. So $10 there and everywhere else. Now, we already know that earned value is the budgeted cost, budgeted cost. It's not an actual cost. It's a budgeted cost of work performed is the key word. If you ain't done it, you ain't got it. Earned value has to be performed. It's something you've done. So, if on the project you end up doing this and this, both on day one, then it means your earned value is $20. It's what you earned. You see, you got two of them done. So the formula for earned value is really this. Earned value is equal to percent complete times the planned value. So what was the planned value for these two panels? It was $10 a piece making 20. See? So you got 100% of these 20 done. So you could look at it like this. 100% of 20. Or you could look at it as 200% of what was planned for day one. However you look at it, it's important for you to understand earned value is the value of what you did. So it's the price tag of what you put on the work. Let me give you another example. Let's say we're going to eat this 
orange and we say, okay, it's gonna be $60 plan value, which really is the budget for that piece of work. So it's gonna be $60 to eat the orange. If you eat half of the orange, your earned value is $30. But what happens if you spent $80 to eat the orange? It doesn't change anything. Earned value is based on the planned value, which is the promise. So if you promise management, I'm gonna eat half of this orange in one day, if you ate half of the orange in one day, you're basing your value on what you promised. You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, your formula for earned value, you need to remember it's earned value is equal to percent complete times planned value, or in this example where I said, okay, $60 budget for the entire project, and I had done half of the entire project, it was percent complete times BAC, budget at completion. Now you might be wondering why two different formulas? Let me show you one more example really quick and you'll see how earned value could be either, but you need to know how to apply both formulas. So let's take a look at this same example and the plan is to paint a wall and the painter has been given four days to do it and breaks the work into four and values the work as $10 for that, $10 for that. These are all planned values, by the way. Okay. So if the planned value for day one, two, three, and four, they're all $10, the budget at completion, the BAC, is equal to $40. Why? Because the BAC is your cumulative. Did you know these words? Cumulative. Cumulative plan value is your budget at completion. In other words, your plan value for each day or time period of the project if you add them all up, you're gonna get BAC. That's all this is saying. So as you approach the exam questions, you, you gotta know both of them. So LTC said, which formulas are most likely to show up on the test? All of them, to be honest. I've, I've had experiences where some students say they had to know all the formulas. Some students say, oh, I didn't need to know all the formulas. In fact, I didn't even get one earned value. What do you do with that? You know, I mean, from someone who said, oh, I needed to know everything from all the, the EACs or the most difficult ones to TCPI. And then you, you hear on, on social media, some other students saying, what a waste of time. I shouldn't have even wasted my time on earned value. You know, just very recently, there was a student who said, I had 10 earned value questions. So there's no way to gauge, but the best approach is to know them all. This one about knowing your BAC is cumulative plan value, it could really help you in some questions. Because some questions, they don't break it down into time period, they just give you a budget and they tell you the percent complete and they expect you to know how to calculate the earned value. So in this example I'm drawing here, we know that the budget at completion is $40. Now, to go a step further to show you how earned value will be calculated, let's say at the end of day one, the work accomplished is this, watch this. Work accomplished at the end of day one, I will shade it green. So at the end of day one, all of this work was done. And this is meant to be three quarters, three quarters, okay. Now, how would you calculate earned value? It's, it's easy now that you, you have it visual, but the formula that you need to use should be earned value equals percent complete 
times planned value for day one. You see, in certain instances, you're going to be given the percent complete for a time period. If you're given the percent complete for a time period, you need to apply this formula. Now on the flip side, from what we're seeing in this image, we could break down the project into quadrants for every day. If you cal calculate all the quadrants, we have four plus four plus four plus four, four quadrants making 16. So if you think about it, the total work to be done is to paint 16 of these little quadrants. Now, if you look at what has been accomplished, it's three out of the 16. See that? Because we've accomplished one, two, and three. So how do you calculate that? Well, we've done three out of 16, and we know the budget at completion. So this three out of 16 is like your percentage, your percent complete in fraction, okay? So you want to multiply the work complete times the budget at completion, which is $40. So I'm trying to show you, you could do it either way. You could do it using the plan value, or you could do it using the budget at completion. But you have to get good and be in command of what to use and when, okay? So four goes here, four, and four goes here, 10, and that is 30 over four which is 7.5, the same number, or $7.50, the same number you would get if you did three over four times the planned value of 10, okay? So you could use either the percent complete times the planned value, or you could use the percent complete times the budget at completion, depending on the circumstance, okay? So you, you really need to get good and be in command of this. All right, do you have any questions about earned value? We're still gonna take a look at these formulas. I'm gonna break them down for you. And I have a question for us to look at. So let's just do that. Let's go to that question because we're into control cost and there is quite a lot of stuff for us to cover in that one. So I'm gonna show you a question which I put on social media a few days back and asked people to solve it. So I'm going to give you guys a good, healthy five minutes and see what you do with it. Okay. So this is going to test you on all the stuff I just showed you and the EACs. Okay. If you need a quick refresh on the, of the EACs, here are the EACs. So under control cost, we have forecasting and we use ETC and EAC. There are four formulas for EAC and you need to know all of these for your exam just to be on the safe side. The first EAC formula that I like playing with is this one, actual cost plus your ETC that is brand new. So what, what is this formula all about? This formula is really all about you realizing that your budget is fundamentally flawed. That's really what it means. It means your budget is flawed. Let me, let me give you a, a close up of it. So if we're gonna break this down, now let me get out of the way so you can see it. If I was gonna break this down, I would, first of all, do my best to get what we call a brand new bottom-up ETC, which is this. So I wanna get your brand new bottom-up ETC and add it to the amount you've spent to get your estimate at completion. Okay, let's do a close-up so you can see it really good. All right, so you got your estimate to complete, but you wanna add it to your actual cost. This is the amount of money you spent. This is the amount of money you need to spend. 
this amount of money you need to spend, we call it the ETC, estimate to complete. And how do you get this brand new bottom up ETC? You can see it says based on a brand new bottom up ETC. So how do you get the brand new bottom up ETC? By estimating from the ground up, every single piece of the project is gonna be estimated. You're gonna put them all together, you're gonna to get your brand new bottom up ETC, okay? So that's the very first one. Now let's take a look at the next one. So that's the first formula I usually show people because it's the easiest to remember, in my opinion. The second one that I feel is pretty easy to remember is this one. Um, you got your budget at completion, you got your CPI, you just divide BAC divided by CPI. When do we use this one? We use this one when we expect our CPI, cumulative CPI, when we expect this to continue into the future, we use this formula. So the formula would typically say something like um, EAC based on typical variances, you know, or a current cumulative CPI. Okay, that's when we use that one. And then the one that begins to take it down a lot of text is this one. There's one that begins to take you down so much text, this one. So this is the beginning of it. So it starts off with what you saw previously, AC plus this, and this is really your ETC in disguise. But ultimately, you're going you're gonna to have to calculate your ETC by saying BAC minus EV. All right. And then the very last one is this one. And this is, we, they usually use the term um, EAC based on the remaining work being performed at the budgeted rate. So this, that's quite important. And that's why I have this here. You can see, um, based on um, EAC, based on work remaining. This is really the work remaining, but it's based on the budgeted rate, okay? And last but not least, we have the really humongous one that I showed you that looks a little bit intimidating, and that is EAC based on the current cumulative CPI and SPI. So that's really what we have to deal with right now. We, we have to take a look at all of these and try to unravel them. So yeah, right behind me, EAC equals AC plus BAC minus EV. We're gonna take a look at all of these EACs now. So let's go back to our question. And yeah, let's go over all the formulas. Let's do that. So the second formula, I believe that was the EAC equals BAC over CPI. Is it this one? That one? Was it that? Or was it EAC equals BAC minus EV on this side, and then we had plus AC on the other side? Was it that one? Let's just do all of them, all right? I'm gonna show you all of them and you can stop me, okay? So let's start again. The very first one, like I showed you, is this. This is, in my mind, the easiest of them all because it's very simple. Think of, think of it like this. If you went to the store with $100 to buy some personal items, and midway in, in your shopping, you had spent $30 spent. And then you take a look at what you have left to buy. You do a brand new estimate for what you have remaining, and you realize, oh my goodness, I've got another $100 to spend. I only budgeted 100 and you're telling me that my brand new bottom-up ETC is 100. That's true. It means something moved, something changed. So you were not fully aware of the prices in the store. 
So your EAC in this case is just going to be what you spent, the thirty dollars plus your brand new estimate. You now need a hundred and thirty dollars. That is pretty much how EAC works. EAC is how much have you spent? How much more work have you got? Okay. So that was the first formula. Now the second formula is EAC equals the budget at completion divided by the CPI. So think of it like this: based on how bad or good your cost performance is. The outcome is not going to be your BAC. The outcome is going to be this. So let me give you an example. You're a project manager on a project. It's a ten thousand dollar budget. Okay, your budget is split into different months. So let's say you got three, three and four. Excuse me. Let's say at the end of month one, month one. So this is three k. That's what you plan to do. Okay. Instead of you spending three thousand dollars to get all the work done, at the end of month one. You spent six thousand dollars. Six k is your actual cost at the end of month one. Your planned value is three k. You got all the work done, so your earned value is also three k. So we could say month one earned value. Is three k. Plan value is three k. An actual cost is six k. Now, if that's the case, think about it. What is your cost performance index? Your cost performance index is earned value three k. Right, divided by actual cost. Of six k, that's three divided by six. The k and the dollars cancel, and you have zero point five for your CPI. So imagine your CPI is zero point five. What is the outcome going to be based on you spending double what you should have? That's the simplicity in BAC divided by CPI cumulative. You see. It just looks at how much money should you have spent, how much money did you spend, what is the CPI? That means you are getting half of the value that you should for the money you're spending. So you spent six k, you didn't get six k value, you got three k. So you you're getting half of the value you should for the money you're spending. You're spending twice. So the formula pretty much just takes. This CPI of zero point five, and it plugs it into the grand scheme of the project. So it takes a look at the high level, the top level budget. So it says your EAC, the end of this project is going to be your budget at completion, which is ten from my example, divided by your CPI. So you would say ten divided by zero point five, and that gives you twenty k. So this prediction is looking at the cost performance continuing into the future at zero point five. You see what I'm saying? Now let's take a look at another example for the same problem. Let's say in month two. Month two. So you have three k for PV, three k for PV, and four k like that. And of course, it's dollars. Month one, we already know the performance and what happened. But remember, 
when you're doing EAC, you got to look cumulative. So let's say we're looking cumulative, okay? And again, all the work for month one and month two got done. However, when we look at the spend, we realize that at this point here, at this milestone, you've accomplished $6,000 of work. So EV equals 6K, but your actual cost is 9K at the end of month two. Month to end. So your CPI has to be recalculated at the end of month two to factor in your actual cost and your earned value, your new earned value for at the end of month two. And we're gonna have three goes here, two, three goes here, three, 0 0.667 or 67. Now the CPI has improved. So when we are calculating the EAC, we're gonna have a difference at the end of month two it's going to be 10 divided by 0 0.67. And what does that give you? What's 10 divided by 0 0.67? Anyone? Fifteen? The answer 15, 14.92, thank you very much, 14.92. It probably should have been 15 if I'd done all the 6666667. But anyway, this is K, K dollars, okay? So roughly 15K. So what do we see? We see a difference between the first prediction at the end of month one, at the end of month one, the EAC was coming up as 20K. Now at the end of month two, it's coming up as 14.2K. Why? Because EAC changes based on the project's current conditions. So what you're seeing in this example is the way this formula, or even all the formulas, you know, need to be used to find out your EAC at any point in time. All right, so that was EAC equals BAC divided by cumulative CPI, yes, indeed. So it is actually more like 14.992. If you actually use the calculator, you should get 15 because it's like saying 10 times three over two. So it's like saying 30 over two. So it's upside down. So it's really, it would have given you 15 pinpoint precise. So that's really how to use that formula LTC. Does that help? So use cumulative. Yes, you always use cumulative. So take a look at this. Cumulative just means from inception to date. So month one, month two, month three. If you are at the end of month one, then you need to use the plan value, of course, for month one, and all the metrics you use, the EV, the PV, the AC, you only have one month to go off of. But if you have two months, don't just use the EV, PV, and AC for month two. Use the EV, PV, and AC for the cumulative. Cumulative means you need to factor in the inception to date, you see? So you need, to, you need to add up all of the EV, like we did in this example. We said EV for month one was three, and EV for month two was three as well. Well, you, you gotta add them up to give you six. That's how we got the six. So when you're using EAC, you always use inception to date values. Never use a value. like. A trick question could be, um, at the end of month two, the cumulative earn value is this. The earn value for month one is this. 
So earn value for month one is 3K, but we don't want to use 3K. We need to use the 6K because EAC looks at the entire project. So you're using the entire project budget, then you need to use the entire inception to date values, okay? So the keywords that you're gonna find, there might not even be any keywords. They could just say um, a project has the following, the following um, metrics. So if they tell you this month one, at the end of month one, EV is 3K, at the end of month two, EV is 3K, or let's say four months two alone, four months two only, okay? Four months one only, okay? Plan value, 3K, actual cost, whatever it was, can't remember what we made it, um, and PV, so, you know, I usually use like EV month one, PV month one, AC month one, so I don't get them mixed up, you know. Was 10K total, but what was the, oh, it was 10K, thank you, 10K. And then what, had, what did we spend at month two, at the end of month two, do you recall? Because I'm making it up on the fly. But let's say AC at the end of month one was, um, 10K, AC at the end, or four months two only was another 4K. When you're doing the calculation for EAC, do not use this, do not use this, add them up. So you, you gotta get the cumulative, that's gonna be 6K that you use instead of just, you know, and then this one is gonna be, that's another 3K, that's gonna be 6K as well for your calculations, and then this one would be 14K. So you gotta use inception to date at all times, at all times. They're, they're not even gonna be very kind to remind you. They're just gonna say, this is what happened in month one, this is what happened in month two, this is what happened in month three, what is the EAC? Then you need to know, okay, I don't use any of these in isolation, you know, sometimes what they do is they would give you CPI cumulative. And I'd say um, you at month six, CPI four month six is equal to 0 0.9. Don't fall for the trick. You don't need that one. This is the one you need. The same thing for the other formulas. It, it always has to be cumulative. All right. So that's the trick. All right, is there some confusion? Always use cumulative, always use inception. Oh, so I was saying, if you are given CPI for one particular month, like they say CPI for month two, don't use this because they could give you month one as well and say CPI, the cost performance index at the end of month one was, was um, 0 0.8. The cost performance index at the end of month two was 0 0.6. The cumulative cost performance index, and they may not write it with a C, they'll just say cumulative cost performance index is a 0 0.9, then this is what you wanna go by because this is inception to date, okay? Never use anything but cumulative. And if they give you a problem, you, you have to find cumulative metrics or your EAC will always be off. Does that make sense? Let me give you another table here. Let's say you had this as a problem. And you have month one, month two, month three, and they gave you values like this. And they said, what is 
the budget, what is the estimate at completion on this project? That's all they're going to ask you. Then you need to factor in, okay, if they give you the budget at completion as being 100, you got to know what you are doing is cumulative for all of these. So you need to add all of these up to find the EAC based on whatever they're asking you to do. So if they say, what is the, what is the EAC based on the, based on the work being completed at the current CPI? Then you need to add these up, six plus eight plus two, 16. Add up the plan values, 14. And then 15 here. And then you're going to say, okay, CPI equals what? Earn value 15 divided by actual cost 16. So 15 divided by 16, whatever that is, this is the number to use. Okay, that is the number to use. Do not just find the CPI for any one month and use it. No. Use the cumulative. Does that make sense? You got to use the cumulative. Cumulative is the key word for EAC. Let's take a look at the PMBOK guy just to clarify some of this language. It's unfortunate that they don't um, accentuate it as much as I would have liked. Let's see if they even mention it. Do they even mention it? Mm. Okay, well, at the top of page 265, it says the project manager's manual EAC is quickly compared with a range of calculated EACs representing various risk scenarios. When calculating EAC values, you might want to highlight that. The cumulative CPI and SPI values are typically used. It's not typical, it is, they should always be used. So when calculating EAC values, the cumulative CPI and SPI values are typically used. While EVM data quickly provide many statistical EACs, only three of the more common methods are described. And then they give it to you. All right, so as a guide, I would say go back. It's page 265. I would say go back to watch all of these problems again and it will make sense, okay? It will make sense. Just go over all of them again and just remember if you get any problem on the exam, they're not always going to be as kind where EACs are concerned to give you the CPI. You have to work it out. The SPI you have to work it out as well, okay? So that was the second formula. We've only got 12 minutes left, so let me get my skates on. So the next formula, EAC equals AC plus BAC minus EV. This does not have any indices involved, which makes it pretty straightforward. So just take the budget at completion, earn value at the time that you're doing it, the total actual cost at the time you're doing it. You know, so in our previous example, we had, um, let's say the AC at that point was 10 plus the budget at completion, which was 10 as well, minus the earn value, which was six, that would have given you 14, which was close to our CPI-based EAC, which was 15, okay? So that's that one. And then the final one is very similar to this. I think the big problem many people have is the formulas themselves, like, you know, the formulas. You, you gotta get the formulas down and then everything will begin to come together slowly but surely. So this final EAC 
is based again on this cumulative. And I characteristically use the C because the PMI once upon a time did use the C, the cumulative, C for cumulative, just to remind you. But I know a lot of folks don't know this because it's not being taught properly. Um, but cumulative, you need to remember, it's inception to date. Just remember my example and you do well. Okay, so if we took metrics such as the ones we got, we would have had 10, and then we would have had 10 times, let's do that again. We would have had the AC plus 10 minus six, and divided by the CPI was uh, what? 0 0.67, and the SPI was one, we were on track. So that would become 10, all of this would now become 10 plus four divided by 0 0.67. So you use this when the PMI tell you based on the CPI and SPI. They could say based on the CPI and SPI, or they could say based on schedule and cost performance. See, based on schedule and cost performance. So if I was really going to um, give, anyway, let me finish this first one. So 10 plus what? What is four divided by 0 0.67? Six. Is it 10 plus six? Four divided by 0 0.67 gives you what? Six. It should be six. All right, so 16. So that would be the answer. So let me just show you these conditions really quick. Really quick, I'll show you the conditions one by one. All right, so taking a look at EAC, condition one, which is your formula that says EAC plus ETC. This is based on a brand new bottom up ETC. So if they tell you something to the effect of um, the budget is fundamentally flawed then you know they're talking about this formula, okay? So EAC1 is when the budget is fundamentally flawed. It is not reusable. You cannot reuse the budget. It's totally messed up. The next one, EAC2, is BAC divided by CPI, and this is based on the current cumulative CPI. Some of the triggering language you could find here are things like, um, oops. Uh-oh. Okay, let's do it again. EAC2 is equal to BAC divided by CPI and you would have based on current cumulative CPI. And then additional language could be the cost performance is not expected to change or cost performance will remain the same for the duration of the project. Or you could also have cost variances are typical or considering typical cost variances. There's so many ways they could spit it. But the bottom line is things aren't gonna get better. 
your cost performance is what it is. And it, it, it could be that your cost performance is even a one. CPI could be a one. So it's not always a negative thing, if you get what I mean. All right, I'm going to move this out of the way so you got more space. All right. All right, so let's do EAC three. So the third EAC is equal to actual cost plus BAC minus EV. And this is based on work remaining completed at the budgeted rate. So you, you're gonna have this kind of language in some of the questions based on remaining, work remaining completed at the budgeted rate. But there's also other language that could be used. So let me show you some other examples. You could have something like based on ET, ETC work remaining completed as budgeted, budgeted. You can also have considering cost variances are, watch the word, atypical. In other words, they're not typical, meaning it's not going to continue and the budget can still be used. That's what that means. So considering cost variants are atypical, you can also have um, based on atypical cost performance. Okay, so that is EAC3, not in the order that the PMI have it in the PMBOK guide. And then last but not least is EAC4, which is the long one, the big old one, the one that everyone runs away from because they think it's hard, but it's not hard. And just remember you have these indices at the bottom times times CPI, like that. And don't forget to keep them separate from the AC. And you would typically have the language based on, based on current cumulative CPI and SPI. That is pretty much the language. Um, you could also have um, if, the cost and schedule performance um, affect the outcome, something like that. If cost and schedule performance affect the outcome or like that considering SPI and CPI or schedule and cost performance, things like that. Oh, one more thing. On some of the questions, they may just give you numbers. So they could say EAC, what is the EAC if, what is the EAC if BAC equals this, CPI equals this, 
SPI equals this. Um, and um, they may just give you one. Um, they may give you PV, for example, PV equals 20. Now, if they gave you this, you would have to find out the EV in order to solve the problem, depending on whatever the problem is. Okay. So now that you've explained them better, yes, yes. Yeah. So AC. Yeah, you need AC, exactly. So how do you find your AC? Well, if you've got PV of 20, you're gonna have to work backwards and say, okay, I know my PV, I know my SPI, SPI equals PV over EV, I beg your pardon, EV over PV. So if you know what your PV is, if you got 0 0.2 equals EV, over 20, then you can find your EV. And if you know your EV, then you could say CPI equals 0 0.3 equals whatever EV happens to be. What will EV be? 10? No, 4. So EV will be 4 over AC. You can find your AC you know, by saying four divided by 0 0.3. So there are many permutations and combinations regarding the questions, and there's no quick way of guessing what they could do. But I would, if I were you, I would know all of these formulas. And we're only halfway, so I do apologize. We, we have gone over the limit, but there's a lot more that we have to address. And I apologize for keeping you over the allotted time. I must say though, I did send you an email earlier regarding tomorrow. Tomorrow, unfortunately, our schedule has been somewhat thrown upside down. And the reason is because, all right, well, now that we have uh, resolved this uh, schedule um, problem, let us move on. Do you have any questions about EAC or does it make, does it all make sense now? Yeah, okay, so let me show you that problem that I was talking about that um, spurred our quest no more. And I wanted to give you about three minutes to play with it. Seriously, if you attempt this problem, you will find gaps, which is good. I do want you to find gaps. So let's read it together. Your project has had issues since the very beginning and your costs have risen suddenly to accommodate the rising cost of a raw material. You know what, let me give you an easier one first. Let me give you the easiest of them all and then we'll, we'll touch base on this. This is an easier one, okay? So I'll let you read it, this is so easy. Um, here's your poll. Some of you have already seen this on uh, social media. So you may already know the answer, but I'll give it to you nonetheless. All right, and I'll give you, I'll give you four minutes for this one. Four minutes. Okay, four minutes. I'm really sorry we're going over, but it is important we test our knowledge on this stuff. All right.
a few seconds left. All right, let's start by chatting in which formula we should be using for this. Which formula should we use based on the language that we have seen? Anyone know? No response. <laughs> okay, no, but no one wants to bell the cat. Okay, so which formula should it be LTC? Which one of them? Is it um, divided BAC divided by CPI? Or is it some other one? Good, very good. That's correct. Thank you. That's correct, Maribel. That's correct as well. Good. All right. <clears throat> um, I guess you meant ETC plus AC. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think Maribel meant AC. Good. Okay. So what is AC? What is AC at this point? This is given to you on a platter in this question. <laughs> Okay, so what is, what is AC? AC is 555, five, five. that's correct, Doris, thank you. Okay, and then what is the ETC? That's the master key, sifting through all of the junk and getting to the gold. You need to find it. It's been given to you. You don't even need to calculate it. Okay, so let me highlight the most important parts. Okay. The cumulative cost to date is this. That's your cost. At month two, what completed is 20% and the budget is spread over five months equally. That's telling me about the budget. I don't need that. And it says midway in the project management calls for a new estimate for the remaining 80% of the work. See? So management calls for a new estimate, which gives a 2.5 million value. So that 2.5 million they're mentioning is the value of the estimate. That's the amount of money that you're estimating. Now, someone might say, oh, is that the old estimate? You have to read between the lines. It's not the old estimate. It's a new estimate. It can't be the old estimate because it said five months equally at this. Five times two to five K is not going to give you two million. So you immediately know, oh, that is the ETC based on a brand new bottom up estimate. So 2.5 million plus your AC. 2.5 plus 0 0.55 will give you 
this, three, three million fifty-five thousand. And that's how you get option B as the answer. Okay, so the trick is to sift through the noise. You got to sift through the noise to get the answer. All right. So you need to get used to, to seeing these. Uh, if I were you, I'd go back to the video when it's all rendered and all put up for you. You need to go back. Hey, um, Angel, I hope you got your email from uh, earlier, which had the links to the tech camp you attended. All right. So here's another one. So taking what I showed you at first, take that knowledge and apply it to this second question. Huh. You know what, Angel? Send me, send me a different email. I think something crazy is going on with that email address. <laughs> Maybe it's going to spam. I don't know. But I'll, I'll send it again. Okay. So same question but a different EAC is being demanded. Oh, fantastic. Great job, I'm glad you sailed through the audit. Thank goodness. <laughs> awesome. That is great. <laughs> oh dear, back and forth, musical chairs, but I'm glad, I'm glad it's all done. Now we, we can fix a date and go full speed ahead. Awesome. All righty then. Well, I'm going to give you guys a poll and I'm going to ask you to take a stab at it. It is very, very straightforward. Very straightforward. Or maybe we do it together. Let's do it together so I can get you guys out of here. It's been a long day for you, so I shouldn't be stressing you like this. So let, let me help you. Okay. So cumulative cost to date, that immediately tells you your actual cost. So taking a look at this problem, those folks listening to the audio, you probably want to watch the video or you, you won't get it. So um, it says, what is the EAC if the schedule performance and cost performance have significant impact on the outcome? So which one are we going to use? It's the one that is budget at completion minus earned value divided by your SPI times CPI, okay? Now, your actual cost is this. We already know that. It says cumulative cost to date is that. It says at month three, work completed is 25%. So we know that the work percent complete is 25%. Percent complete, 25%. And it says the budget is spread over five months equally at 230K a month. Then we know that the budget at completion is gonna be five times 230K, which is 1,150,000. Okay? So we take this budget at completion, 1150, and we multiply it by the percent complete. So the earned value is gonna be the 1,150,000 times 0 0.25, right? And what do we get when we multiply that? A quarter of 1.15 million. What do we get? We get let's see. We get two hundred and eighty seven thousand five hundred. Two hundred and eighty seven thousand five hundred. All right, so we know EV is 287,500, 287,500. That's your EV. OK. 
Okay. Um, and then the SPI and CPI, we're going to have to calculate them. How do we know the SPI? How do we know the CPI? We need to take a look at the previous part of the question. So we've got the AC, we've got the EV, we can calculate the CPI from that, but we don't have the PV explicitly given. How do we know the PV? We have to break down the problem and visualize how much money should have been spent at month three, or how much work rather should we have done by the end of month three? So that's one, that's two, that's three. We know we've got four and five. But at the end of this time period here, the amount of money that should have been spent is 230 for this month, 230 for this, 230 for this, which means the, PV, the PV would have been 690, 690K, all right? Now, if we take all this money, or all these numbers, and we put them into the formulas, we get our EV, like I showed you, your CPI, if you divide the EV by AC, you get 0.49. If you do the same for SPI and substitute, you get 0.42. And last but not least, if you do this for the big old formula, you get all of this. And if you do the final calculation, you find that the answer is 47 nine seven zero zero so this will give you four million seven hundred and ninety seven thousand and that would be the answer so that's how you get this okay all right well i don't want to keep you any further but if you have specific questions it would be good to ask them before we disperse. The last thing I wanted to call your attention to is TCPI. It is also something that you should be aware of. So your two complete performance index, you could think of it simply as your work remaining divided by your funds remaining. Work remaining based on the BAC it's just gonna be that same part of your EAC formula, BAC minus EV. And the bottom is gonna be BAC minus AC for the funds remaining, okay? Now your TCPI based on the EAC is gonna be very similar at the top. It's gonna to be the same thing, but at the bottom, the funds remaining, you now base it on the EAC. Okay, and that's how you do it, folks. So all of the formulas on page 267, you need to know those before your actual PMP exam. Got to spend some really good time with these formulas. There's a lot of formulas to master. So many of them. So many of them to master. All right, so any questions that I can uh, further clarify for you before we call it a day or a night, I should say. Oh yes, of course, there's something else I should have shown you. Um, I typically do when, when we've got time and that is the data flows. So, before we round up, I just want to call your attention to the flow and how it works for cost. So for cost, you've got your project management plan going into all the processes for cost. And then we have some interactions between determined budget, giving you a cost baseline, which really is part of your project management plan. 
And we also have cost estimates and BOEs going to determine budget. Project funding requirements that we talked about comes out of determined budget and goes to control cost. Direct and managed project work, as usual, gives all of those monitoring and controlling processes outside of integration, WPD. And then those processes, such as control cost, give cost forecast, and also it gives WPI to monitor and control project work. Control costs also gives change requests to perform integrated change control. Agreements are also used in the determine budget process to decide upon the final cost baseline based on the agreement. So in the agreement, you have that amount, that final amount you shouldn't exceed and things like that, okay? And that's it, that's the end of the data flow. And we've come to the end of cost management. Bit of a fire drill. You gotta know those formulas really well. Now, are there any formulas or concepts of cost that I can better clarify for you? Or any concerns? I think your biggest concern is Phil took you 30 minutes over. But I appreciate you sharing that news uh, with me, LTC Angel. I'm going to be sending you something else um, to a different email. Um, and if there are no further questions, then I'll just say thank you very much for joining me. And we'll see you again tomorrow at the new time for the morning session, 12 Eastern. I'm going to be updating the uh, calendar, and you guys will get a reminder for tomorrow. Okay? All right, thank you all very much and see you tomorrow.